to lesson 12 in AC. Lesson 12, we're going to apply some of the things that we've learned about AC. In particular, we're going to apply it to earth loop fault impedance. There are two lessons, lesson 12A and lesson 12B. Both cover the same material. Lesson 12A is kind of an extensive approach, takes you into the detail. Then lesson 12B, we look at some short ways that we can get to the fault loop impedance result a little more quickly, but we need this underpinning knowledge that we're going to give you in 12A. So let's get underway. Uh, part zero, I've called it, is we need to contextualize ourselves to AS3000 2018 I've used, um, just available this year. You can also use 2007 or 8, I'm not quite sure what year the latest version, the last version I should say was. The page numbers have changed, but the actual rule numbers have not changed. So it's going to be slides 1 to 6. Part 1, we're going to look at measuring fault loop impedance, slides 7 to 17. Uh, method 2, calculating the maximum length allowable for a final sub-circuit and making sure we come in under that. That's slides 18 to 21. The third approach is to uh, measure the active and active earth impedance and compare it to a table in AS3017, that slides 22 to 24. Part 4, what if the cable or the circuit breakers are not on the table, how can we actually calculate it, so that slides 25 to 32. And then part 5 is a summary of all that we've done, uh, slides 33 to 42. So, Lesson 12a, I've broken it up into those, effectively, six parts, 0 to 5. So what I'd like you to do here is actually I'd like you to pause the video. And just take the time, it's not much reading, to go to page 60 and read through Protection of Automatic Disconnection of Supply. Go to page 278 or table 5.1, have a, just have a look at the table, see if you can understand how the table works and what it does. Um, rule 5.7, earth fault loop impedance, and read, it's about four pages to read there, starting on page 312. Then rule 8.3.9, verification of impedance, just one page to read there, page 425. Um, then have a look at tables 8.1, 8.2 on pages 427 and 428. Again, just familiarise yourself with the tables and how they work. And then B4.6, Earth Fault Loop, page 447. Again, it's a table and a couple of worked examples. And then 5, B5, again, is a table, uh, maximum length of circuits on page 4. 150. Table B1 uh, also gives you maximum root length in meters, different size conductors, etc, etc, tripping currents, and that's on page 458 of the standard. So take the time to just pause here, get out your standard, your AS3000, and read through those. Well, hopefully you paused on how to read through the standard. And I will assume that you have done so. So, in this particular introduction, the earth system impedance and the trip characteristic of a protective device must be such that a fault of negligible impedance occurs, that's active to earth, short circuit. Automatic connect, disconnection of the supply with a fault current high enough to operate the direct protective device, but it's not only got to operate it, it's got to operate it within a specific amount of time. And if you'd read the standard, you'll understand those two things. So automatic disconnection and within a specific amount of time. That's what a circuit breaker or a protective device does. You've got to make sure you draw enough current to make the circuit breaker do its job. And we'll be having a look at some circuit breaker current curves and explaining how they work. So what is a fault loop? So if you can see here on our drawing where I've got the cursor, this is the 
pole mount or the pad mount transformer and these are the low voltage windings. So between neutral and any active we're getting about 230 volts. That comes from the supply authority normally through a protective fuse at a switchboard and then into the installation and at some point we're saying there is a fault and that's what we're doing here there's a fault that red dot means there's a fault and current is going to flow through the protective device and back to the neutral and the neutral and the earth are connected together with the MEN link and that takes us back to the center of our transformer so hopefully sufficient current will flow in that circuit and it will do it in the appropriate amount of time. So one, the importance needs to be, sorry, the impedance I should say, needs to be low enough to allow a high current flow to cut current to operate the protective device within the given period. The earth loop impedance is matched to the protective device's tripping characteristics. Now we'll be looking at tripping curves there are three basic different types of tripping curves for circuit breakers and that's what we mean by tripping characteristics. It's about the tripping curve for particular circuit breakers. The earth system, there are three ways to determine whether a fault loop impedance is okay or not. So there's three ways to do that. The first is to measure the fault loop impedance at the load and pair it against the values in table B4.1 of AS3000. Two, we can calculate the maximum length allowable for the fault current limiting device and try and come in under that in the final sub-circuit. Or three, we can actually measure the active, active earth impedance and also compare it to table 3.2 in AS3000. And 17. So we're going to look at each of these in turn one, two, and three in the next parts of this final lesson, lesson 12a.